Fort Macon was one of a chain of defensive forts that the United States built after the War of 1812 against the threat of foreign attack. The fort was constructed from 1826 to 1834 to defend Beaufort Harbor, the second largest seaport in North Carolina. When the Civil War began, Fort Macon was taken over by local Confederate militia, which armed it and prepared it for battle. After taking New Bern, Burnside targeted Fort Macon as part of the Union's effort to take the important logistical port of Beaufort. 1862, March, Union forces were able to capture the city of New Bern, and they came down the railroad from New Bern to occupy Beaufort and Moorhead City, which is across the harbor from Fort Macon. Uh, those points were taken without any resistance. All the garrison of Fort Macon and the surrounding area had been pulled back into the fort itself. So the Union Army was able to occupy Beaufort, Moorhead City, Carolina City, and pretty much cut the fort off from outside help. Union Navy forces, there were four gunboats blockading the harbor entrance offshore off Beaufort Inlet, and so Fort Macon was pretty much surrounded. Colonel Moses J. White and his garrison of 403 Confederates defended the encircled fort. Despite their predicament, the besieged defenders refused three demands for surrender. When the last demand to surrender was offered, there was no choice except for the Union soldiers to open fire with their artillery and, and bombard the fort. Uh, the Union forces had three batteries of artillery entrenched in the sand dunes. There were two batteries of mortars, eight and 10 inch caliber, and then a battery of rifled cannons, 30 pounder parent rifles. After the last demand to surrender, then the following morning, April 25th, 1862, the Union Army opened fire on Fort Macon with their artillery and proceeded to blast the fort for 11 hours with their cannons. Helping them from the ocean was, would be a flotilla of four Union Navy gunboats. The gunboats had been offshore blockading the harbor entrance, so when the bombardment began, they steamed up and joined in as well. Now, the fort was built for defense against the naval attack, so the gunboat attack was not something that was really a problem. The guns of the fort turned to face the Union gunboats and opened fire. <laughs> Two of the Union gunboats were hit by the fort's cannon fire. Uh, the flotilla commander's ship had a 65-pound, 8-inch cannonball from the fort go through the side of the ship into the, through two decks into the engine room, missed the engine and main steam line by only six inches and almost went completely out the bottom of the ship. Now right after that happened, the flotilla commander decided that's not enough of this, turned his ships around, left the battle, steamed away, did not come back. So the fort very easily drove the ships of the Union Navy away like it was supposed to do. It was built for defense against naval attack. Against the cannons of the Union Army in the sand dunes outside the fort, about three quarters of a mile away, that was another matter entirely. The fort was not prepared to defend against siege positions uh, and artillery being fired from the western side. There were 54 cannon in the fort at the time, but none of them was a mortar that could launch projectiles at steep angles and drop exploding shells on an entrenched enemy. Lacking mortars, the Confederates were unable to provide effective counter-battery fire against the Union guns and resorted to aiming the cannons they had at rakish angles. Meanwhile, the Federal forces brought to bear two batteries of mortars as well as powerful rifled cannon against the mismatched defenders. No one was really aware of what rifle or artillery could do to a structure like this with five foot thick brick walls. Well, when the battle took place, they got their answer very quickly. These rifle cannons had enough power to, to crack the walls open and even breach them. And that's exactly what happened here. The fort was hit almost 600 times during the course of the battle. Uh, it was very badly damaged. Walls were cracking in different places. And the most important room in all of Fort Macon was cracking open from this cannon fire from the rifled artillery. That's one of the gunpowder magazines. Uh, Fort Macon has three powder magazines. One of the gunpowder magazines, the main one in fact, was cracking open from artillery fire. It was on the side nearest the Union guns. So that was what the Union forces concentrated on. And they were cracking the walls open. That one magazine contained 10,000 pounds of gunpowder. 
So if one artillery shell had been able to breach the wall into that room, well, we know what the result would be. So the Confederates in Fort Macon are faced with a rather dismal uh, prospect. They're about to get blown up by their own gunpowder. As the wall is cracking, this danger looms very large in their minds. And after a while, the magazine was cracking to the extent that they realized, that's it, we are done. So at 4.30 on the afternoon of the battle, the white flag was displayed, Fort Macon surrendered. The following morning, Federal forces took control of the fort and paroled the Confederate prisoners. The Union Army would occupy the fort for the rest of the war. Casualties were light, given the intense bombardment, with Confederates having seven men killed and 18 wounded. Union forces suffered even fewer losses, with one man killed and three wounded. The battle at Fort Macon was the second time in history where rifled guns were used against a fort. It also signaled the obsolescence of those structures as a means of defense.